Hey, you guys, welcome back. Talking with Erica Wilson of the Columbia Laser Skin Center. And Erica, I want to talk a little bit about plastic surgery and Dr. Yale Popovich. But before we do that, let's kind of go back to how the center started. You've been in, you've had your own center now for six and a half years. Mm -hmm. yeah. And before that, you were doing what? I was a PA. I was a physician assistant um, in the Dallas for about 10 years. I worked in family practice. Um, I had done some work in internal medicine and emergency medicine before moving back to Oregon. And so. a key point in, in your career doing, being a PA that you were like, I really want to open my own center. Yeah, well, you know, I always had an interest in dermatology. I, I saw and treated a lot of acne, a lot of skin conditions. But it, interestingly enough, I was reading a journal article one day and it was talking about um, laser treatments for tattoo removal. And I'm like, hmm, well, there's a thought. And that do you guys was, do that, by the way? We do, ironically, we don't. Oh, we okay. get a lot of calls about it. It takes some very specific um, and uh, laser equipment to do tattoo removal. Mm -hmm. But um, that is really what kind of got the wheels going, was reading that article. But um, So it just kind of took off from there, and okay. I was ready for a change. And yeah. I had a, you know, a colleague that was willing to take that leap with me. So. so you started off in Hood River mm -hmm. with just you and one other person, right? And now you've got the center in Hood River and a center in the Dells, mm -hmm. and you, not too uh, long ago, brought in a plastic surgeon. We did, Dr. Yale Popovich. Yeah, we are so thrilled. So tell me about the services that you're able to do because you guys can, I mean, stuff that you think you got to go to Portland for, right. or at least I would. Right. You you guys are able to perform. You don't do it obviously in your office, mm -hmm. but right. the, the, the doctors there, tell me about this. Well, you know, the, the great thing, and, and um, my current business partner, Dr. John Willer and I, we really wanted to provide the same level of services for people in the gorge locally, so they didn't have to go to Portland. And we realized that plastic surgery is, is an obvious one, because um, we knew a lot of people that we were referring down to Portland for um, plastic surgery. And we knew that it was really difficult for people because they'd have to go down for the pre-ops and then down for the procedure, and they would have to either spend the night or come back the next morning. And you know, it gets to be you know, onerous to do that. Um, coincidentally, at the same time, they built the, the new um, outpatient surgery center here in town, so it really opened up the door for us to um, start looking to seriously bring a plastic surgeon in with us. And that's when um, we met Dr. Popovich, um, and it has just been such a fabulous partnership with him. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, you know, because plastic surgery has always, I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say always, but in many ways had a stigma around it that it's you know it's for the wealthy it's for the vain um, and if you're not completely self-consumed and have tons of disposable income it's not going to be for you but you guys you, I mean you sp can speak very differently to that because you you are able to perform or offer these services and actually change lives because of things that maybe tragically have happened to people and stuff so what are some of the what are some of the services you perform or your Office. Well, yeah, he does both plastic and cosmetic surgery. So plastic surgery, you know, you kind of have to think of it as kind of reconstructive. So somebody that has maybe breast cancer and they had a mastectomy, he can offer reconstructive surgery for them. Um, someone that's had trauma, again, those are kind of reconstructive um, procedures that he performs. And then there's more elective cosmetic procedures, which he um, provides, you know, it's pretty much head to toe. So it's everything from eyelid surgery to rhinoplasty, facelifts, neck lifts, um, tummy tucks, breast augmentations, liposuction, you know, just very comprehensive. You guys have actually a service called, I think, the Mommy Lift or the Mommy... The Mommy Makeover. Mommy Makeover. Yes. So talk about that a little bit, because yeah. that's kind of the things that happen to moms sure. over time. I mean, obviously, you know, their kids become the priority mm -hmm. and they don't necessarily give themselves the attention that they deserve. And right. besides, their bodies have gone through some major changes. Yeah. So what... What's the mommy makeover? The mommy makeover typically, and, and there's variations on this, but typically it involves things like maybe a liposuction on the tummy area and and or a um, tummy tuck because, you know, things get kind of stretched out after you have kids. Um, and then the other thing too that is oftentimes included in a mommy makeover would be like a breast lift with um, the possibility of augmentation. You know, a lot of times with having children, 
is that you know you do lose the volume in the breast tissue and you know gravity takes it starts taking its toll and so um, the mommy makeovers just nationwide have taken off and you know you were talking about you know the kind of the stigma associated with cosmetic procedures but I have certainly just you know in the six and a half seven years that I've you know been a part of the aesthetic world have really just seen a complete and total shift in you know it being more accessible to people certainly you know regionally that it's more accessible because it's locally but also that it's financially more accessible for them and much safer and definitely much safer absolutely and I think too we all realize it it's not really a vanity what we see when people come in to see Dr. Popovich they don't want to look like somebody else. Mm -hmm. They just want to look better. Right. And I really, my analogy, it's like going to the gym to work out. You know, you just want to feel and, you know, look as good as you feel. Yeah. And I think, you know, cosmetic surgery fits into that. And I think when people have that boost in their self-confidence, we see across the board, you know, they perform better at, at their job. They have better relationships with their, you know, their friends and their family and their loved ones. So it really has a pretty amazing effect on yeah. their lives. Well, moving then from you know, plastic surgery or reconstructive surgery to something that's a little bit less um, invasive. Mm -hmm. One of the things, and we see a lot of this on TV, this product, Latisse, oh, yeah. and I think Claire Danes actually is the mm -hmm. spokesperson yeah, yeah. for it right now. Um, that was, or it's marketed as a eyelash enhancer or it helps grow the eyelash mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. but that's not originally what it what it hit the market for right no actually Latisse has a very interesting history um, originally it started out and, and it still is prescribed for patients that have glaucoma um, and it's been around for 10 plus years but what ophthalmologists noticed is that when their glaucoma patients would come in for their follow-ups they would just have these crazy long eyelashes and it was really noticeable if they were only using Using the drops like in one eye. Oh. So it was, you know, it's very interesting. In fact, um, Dr. Willer, who we work with, he says, yeah, his patients will come in and they're so long that they're hitting the lenses of their la of their glasses, and they need to have them trimmed. Whoa. So it's impressive. Um, so basically, Allergan, the company that holds the patent rights on the glaucoma medication, they're smart enough to figure out that women spend billions of dollars every year on cosmetics to make their eyelashes look longer, thicker, and darker. Well, they had a product that could actually give women that naturally. Uh -huh. So they went through the whole FDA approval process um, showing, demonstrating two things, one that it worked and two that it was safe. Um, and so I believe it's coming up on two years now that the FDA granted them that approval and it hit the market. And it is, it's so amazing to see people come in. We had a gal that came in, oh, probably about three months ago and she had just been on it for maybe a month and she's like, I just had to stop by and show you. And hers were crazy long when she opened her eyes her lashes were up to her brows they were just crazy long and she Whoa. was so excited and she was just like I had to show you yeah now what about like for I mean men who maybe have really really thin absolutely they can use it too mm -hmm. okay yeah. and, and it's a drop it is a drop now the difference is is that um, with Latisse it's actually applied almost like a liner um, just along the lash line oh okay. yeah um, and the biggest concern that we hear from people they're like oh I heard that it's gonna change my eye color um, in fact there's no documented cases of Latisse changing eye color there um, there is a very low percentage of that in the um, drop that's used for glaucoma but never has it been seen with Latisse mainly because it's not going in the eye okay yeah. okay so you actually apply it like a like a liner yeah then. exactly you put it um, actually you put a drop on a on a applicator brush and then you just use the brush and you just apply it along the the base of the lashes okay yeah Are, do you have quite a few clients using this it's right now? it's wildly popular okay yeah well, very, great very popular well, we're going to take another break, but when we come back, we're going to hear about, because I heard a little bit about your uh, your recent European vacation, and it didn't start <laughs> off on such a great day. No, it didn't. So uh, we'll have a little bit of a personal story with Erica when we come back and uh, hear about a recent trip to Europe. So you guys stick with us. We'll be right back.